On this episode, we're chasing some of the biggest buff I've ever laid eyes on. And along the way, we spot a big Tom Leopard having a siesta in broad daylight in a hunting area. What? Are you kidding me? Man, I love hunting in Africa. Brought to you by Safari Club International. First for hunters. Today we're going to go and do a little buffalo hunting. The good thing is this area is known for big ones. Some of the areas you go to for buffalo, they end up being flat, you know, like this, and that's just what you get. But here, you got a good chance of getting one of those big sweeping buffalo that the Serengeti's known for. So I'm jacked, because as you well know, I love buffalo hunting. Not, I don't kind of like it. I don't sort of enjoy it. I love it. So you might as well do what you love. Let's go see if we can find one. We're heading out to an old water hole to see if there was any fresh sign when all of a sudden we found a bull that was definitely that worth there? a closer look and not very far from camp. Boy, that one's a dandy. Yeah, really wide. What do you think? I, I think we should go up there and see if we can shoot him. <laughs> Nothing to it. I wonder if it, it should be thick enough up there, huh? Yeah. You do the sneaky sneak on him? Yeah, we can get down here to this right before the corongo and we'll catch him on the other side. Right down there in that bush. Is he in there with just the two of them? The bigger one is facing us. Yeah. And the smaller one is in the back. You want to try him with your 577? Man, that's a pretty good poke. Is there any chance we can get in a little tighter, maybe? Yeah, let's try to get down there to that rock and then you can see what you can do. But he's facing us, so it's going to be a tight shot. There behind that bush. It's God, crazy. it's thick right there, though. Yeah, thank you. It's about 60 yards. I'm gonna try and put one. I gotta use my scope. Okay. How do I take a chance from this distance? Get okay, right in the chest. Well, there he is. Man, I got nothing but brush. Okay, maybe move up to that rock by yourself. First day frame probably did the trick, but hey, you want to make sure these things aren't going to get up before you get too close. And I didn't come here to save ammo, so.
As I said, better to make sure he stays down. I don't need another dead buff charging me. Pika! <laughs> what a bull, huh? That's a good bull. What an animal. It's these kinds of trophies that show you that conservation is working in Africa. Without it, you're gonna have poaching problems and stuff like that. Thanks to all the folks at Safari Club International and the Safari Club Foundation that are making these kinds of places where we can still go hunting possible. SCI First for Hunters is really doing a great job in Africa and around the world and I sure appreciate everything that they're doing because getting to come and hunt the trophy of a lifetime like this is incredible. Every day when you leave camp, you try to have some kind of a game plan. Like, hey, Let's go out and find a big Cape Buffalo today. But Africa decides what you are and are not going to do, and she is always full of surprises. Yep. What? Where? He's lying. He's lying right in the crotch of the tree. You see him? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's asleep. <laughs> How incredible is this? We're driving in the car looking for buffalo, and we spotted a leopard, a huge male leopard, right in the tree right here. Backed off and let Chewy, which is Swahili for leopard, while away his day in peace and decided to get back to plan A, finding a really big Cape Buffalo. You know, in Africa, you're always finding something new, something different and exciting. And you know how much on Rugged X, we love our music. And this is a shout out to you, Monty, back home in Seattle in the studio. We came across this rock that the guys showed us. It's up on the top of this pile of rocks and they call it the drum rock. And rocks just don't make this kind of noise, normal rock. I don't know what this thing's made out of, but check this out. It's got... Is that incredible or what? So this thing, I don't know if it's made out of iron or what it is, but it's... And if you hit it in different spots, it makes different sounds. And depending on the size of the drumstick you're using, or in this case, the size of the rock that you're using, it makes a different sound. So up here, we got the high lines. Down here, we have the low ones. So you can kind of compose your own music right out here. So there you go. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it now. Amazing, huh? You get out of here and walk around, you never know what you're going to run into. The great thing about being up high, we got up on these rocks and we can see that there's some buffalo down below us. And it looks like even at this distance that there's one that's got a really nice sweep. And he's gone into the shade, which is great because usually they're gonna go in there and lay up, you know, kill some time, chewing their cud and that before they go out and feed later in the evening. So 
We're gonna try and hike down there. It's an awesome sight to see, even at long distance when you can see the big sweep like this. You know, all you can do is go try. Who knows, the wind might kill us, but let's go give it a try. This buffalo is headed straight down to that corongo down there. We'll go up and see if he's there, if he's already, if he's going through. Can you slow down a little, huh? Yeah, he's walking now. It's a tough, tougher track in here. He ran hard, man. Yeah. First time of night. Now you can see when he's walking, it's real tough, slow tracking. It's very hard ground. Like there's hardly anything here, it's just a... Yeah. yeah that's all they see is one little nick or... You know, that's what always amazes me when I'm in Africa and you're with these guys, how good they are. I mean, I know they grew up here and all that stuff, but I don't care. That still is, yeah. let's make that into that same buffalo that we've been following for an hour. Yeah, big track is just a little crack in the ground. Insane, huh? He just runs a little ways and then he'll stop. We'll catch him again in another bush. Goes from one shady spot to another. Huh? Fine. a bull end of the day it's not very often you get him this late at night the light was fading we saw this great bull hiding in some bushes 
Tried to do the sneaky sneak on him, but off he went. Followed him, followed him, followed him. Got on top of him again, off he went again. He was by himself, that was the good news. The bad news was he was by himself and looking at us the whole time. But we finally got to where he was facing away from us, looking back on his track and we circled back around. And that's when the action started. I had one little hole in those trees that I snuck a bullet in. Shooting that 577 with the open sights, it's always difficult in those dark conditions, but he was in a good spot where I could let him have one when he turned and was facing us. He's got a couple extra shots in him, you know? You always want to make sure when it comes to Buffalo that you give him a couple, even if they are 577s. I mean, what the hell? Now, this is something you don't see very often. Here's a bullet that's wedged in this buffalo's horn. I mean, how it got there, I have no clue. I never had a shot at him where he was facing away. The only thing I can think of is the bullet must have gone through his back here when his head was turned and it ended up lodged here or else somebody else might have shot him earlier. Adam Clements and the whole gang has done a fantastic job for us. Once again, the quality of the animals here is unbelievable. I mean, we've been seeing good buffalo day after day, but when you finally see a dandy like this, I mean, look at that horn sweep and those bosses, huh? I mean, it's the bull of a lifetime, the bull of your dreams right here in Tanzania.